It's Platt. And to, today we head to the Baja. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So today the particular beer we have here is Tecate, one of those classic old school brands that sometimes kind of ebbs and flows in popularity, but something you'll always find at your local convenience store, which is where a lot of us buy beer in the first place. Uh, a little history on Tecate. Tecate was founded in Tecate, Baja, California in 1943. Uh, it's just south of San Diego in the uh, Tijuana, San Diego metro area right there along the border. It was opened as Cerveceria Tecate by a gentleman named Alberto Aldrete. Now, he had a couple of goals when he uh, opened the brewery. First, he kind of did for civic pride. He thought it would be... A nice boost to the economy, um, you know, a little something to show that the city was growing. But he also took advantage of an economic opportunity. He thought the town had gotten to the point where it was big enough to support a brewery and that he was going to be the first brewery in a growing city. So it's a little civic pride, a little opportunism, but, uh, but it worked. And it didn't take long for Takati to gain a little traction. By 1947, they were already exporting to several southwestern U.S. states and to Asia, which I find that choice of next market interesting, but I'm, I'm sure there's a good story behind that. As much as any other uh, successful brewery, they ended up selling out to a bigger brewery. In 1954, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, Cohatomec. Moctezuma, which is now known as Heineken, Mexico, came in and purchased Tecate. Ten years later, um, that company's history dates all the way back to 1890 and the brand Carta Blanca, which I might have to do a review in the future. That's kind of a lesser known Mexican brand, but again, a classic brand unto itself. Ten years later, uh, Tecate brought a little innovation to the Mexican beer market. They were the first to Oh, to uh, produce the pull top cans. Uh, before then, if you drank a canned beer in Mexico, you needed a, a can opener. Uh, probably about 20 years earlier in the U.S. is when we got the what's called pull tops. Today, you kind of have the classic pop tops where you just pop the top, what have you. Back in the U.S., up until late 70s, early 80s, you had the pull tabs where you had a little ring, you'd put your finger in, you'd pull it off, you'd pull a strip of metal off the can, and that's what you drink out of. And of course, originally canned beers, you needed the bottle owners, but Tecate was the first to introduce that to Mexico. 30 years later, they were the first to, uh, first major Mexican brewery to produce a light beer when they produced Tecate Light, which comes in a blue can instead of the red can. Um, again, I find that interesting. We, here in America, uh, probably mid-70s with Miller Light, that was the first major U.S. Uh, beer brand with light beer, so they're about 20 years behind the curve. Uh, as far as advertising, uh, Tecate's original advertising slogan was con character with character. And I remember 30 years ago when I started drinking, I had uh, a couple of brothers I went to high school and early college with who uh, were Mexican heritage. And I remember their father always kind of telling me, hey, that Corona stuff, that's for you kids and you gringos, but real Mexicans, drink Tecate. There was just something about it. Yeah, they're both stylistically Mexican lagers, about the same ABV, but just uh, the more sophisticated, the more classic old school Mexican drink Tecate and the kids had your Corona. And I always found that interesting. Uh, Tecate has also always had an association with boxing. For a long time, they sponsored uh, various Golden uh, Boy promotion fights, and they even sponsored uh, Oscar De La Hoya before his promoter days, back when he was in his prime. Today, they are a big sponsor of Canelo Alvarez, probably the most popular boxer in the world, definitely the most popular boxer from Mexico. And they've even had Sylvester Stallone in some of their commercials, I believe just shown in Mexico, nowhere else, but... You know if you're getting Stallone commercials, you're blowing out the budget. Uh, real quick, want to touch on some of their other beers. Uh, first is Tecate Light, 3.9% ABV beer. Kind of self-explanatory there. Uh, they have also Tecate Michelada, 4.1% ABV Michelada in a can. Now, I find this concept interesting as a bartender who's made a million Micheladas in my life. 
how every time somebody wants a little more lime juice or a little more pepper or a little spicier or tomato juice instead of clamato, what have you, a non-standardized drink coming in a standardized can, I find that concept kind of interesting. be interesting to see how that uh, takes off. And last, there's the Cati Alta. It's a 4% ABV beer. It's basically their answer to Michelob Ultra, which again, I find kind of interesting because America's always been kind of looked down on, well, you have a real light palate. That's why you guys drink light beer and this American light lager. And now Mick Ultra is the next step in that. I find it interesting to see that's kind of getting outside the U.S. So it'll be interesting to see how, see how that beer takes off. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. So today I thought I'd talk about Mexican beer in general, but also Mexican beer, big beer, kind of versus craft beer kind of thing. Uh, when we think Mexican beer, again, we think Corona, Tecate, Modelo, Dos Equis, those big brands. And nearly all those big brands fall under two major corporate conglomerates, Moctezuma, a.k.a. Heineken Mexico, and Grupo Modelo, which here in the U.S. Is, falls under the Anheuser-Busch InBev umbrella. Nearly all the brands fall under those two big companies, and for a long time, that was kind of all you had available. Uh, here in the U.S., we had our craft beer revolution in the 80s. They, down in Mexico, really didn't have their craft beer revolution until about 2013, when legislation came around to kind of break the stranglehold those two companies had on distribution. Kind of like here in the U.S., we had to get a break from Bud Miller and Coors kind of controlling the distribution. Same thing down in Mexico. So in about the last decade or so, there's been kind of a craft beer revolution down there, and there's really some cool things going on. I want to highlight a few of the beers that kind of exemplify that. Uh, first, there's Tijuana Moreno. It's a 4.8% craft amber lager. Now, again, when we think about Mexican beers, we think about those golden lager beers with lime in it. Again, your Corona, Pacificos, what have you. But if you do a little research on Mexican beers, there's actually uh, silver brands, old school brands, where they have the darker malts, a little more body, what have you. There's the Negro Modelos, the Bohemias, the Dos Equis Ambers. Uh, they do enjoy some of the darker malts. Again, a little more variety than just the straight kind of generic Corona. And I think it's cool that someone's doing, a, you know, that style of beer. Uh, next is, I uh, hope I'm saying this right, uh, Kukapa Green Card, pun intended, is a 10% ABV barley wine. Now, I think this is absolutely fascinating. Um, I've talked about, you know, bigger beers and cooler climates and lighter beers and warmer climates, this, that, and the other. I think it's great that someone down there, you know, in a mainly tropical climate is pulling off that beer. You never would think, hey, let's go to Cancun and drink barley wine, but I, I think it's cool that someone's pulling off that style. Uh, and lastly, there's one called Good Day Belgian IPA, 7% ABV IPA by uh, Calavera Brewing. I think this is kind of neat because, again, if you study Mexican brewing, you see that uh, a lot of these breweries were started by German immigrants. And the German style of brewing is kind of an antithesis with the Belgian style of brewing. So I think it's cool that someone down there is bringing that Belgian style to uh, probably an area that has not been introduced to a lot of those uh, classic Belgian styles. So I think that's kind of cool. Well, enough about Mexican craft beer. Let's try a beer by a big Mexican brewery. Nice golden lager, plenty of bubbles, a little more, about a finger and a half width of white head. Let's pretty straightforward, uh, not much hop on the nose. Kind of has a little bit of that lager, you know, traditional Mexican lager skunk funk on the nose. Let's give it a try. Doesn't come out in the flavor, though. Um, yeah, kind of straightforward, adjunct lager. Um, slight bit more viscosity than your typical American light. Um, 
I'm going to compare it body-wise to Budweiser here in the U.S., even though they're different beers. Budweiser with that rice is a little unique. Uh, I'm not sure what the adjunct is here. I'm going to presume corn just because agriculturally that's available down there. And it, again, it's a cheaper adjunct, which is what all these big breweries are looking for. Uh, goes down easy. Um, pretty straightforward, simple beer. Um, yeah, not much character there, actually. Um, I will say this, though, I would probably, again, if I was having fight nights with the boys or watching the fights, or I'd probably have this instead of a Corona. Uh, because Corona's in that bottle can kind of skunk, and I don't want that. So this probably this is probably closer to the American style lager. And technically, this is considered American lager. Uh, oddly enough, this probably tastes more like American lager that my generation probably had quit drinking the Miller Lite. You know, we had switched to the Miller Lite, Bud Light, or Warber. So the High Life Coors Original Bud was not a thing a person my age was drinking, so I can kind of see where that would come off as being different, you know, generationally, uh, with my friend's father, like I was saying. So, overall, though, very drinkable lager. I'm not going to say it really jumps out, but, but hey, again, if the price is right, you're at your convenience store. These are like two for four, something like that. Why not? Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.